Hello everybody, I hope you are well, I hope you're staying healthy and I hope you're coping with social distancing and isolating at home. This week I wanted to record a number of videos on the topic of revival and I, I wanted to speak about the topic of revival for three different reasons during this se season. The first reason is Honestly, I long for revival. I know that there are hundreds, thousands, millions of people in this country who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, who do not know the love that we have in Christ, who do not know the grace that we have received from God. And I long to see God move mightily in this country that those hundreds, those thousands, those millions of people might come to believe the good news of Jesus Christ. I long to see that, I long to see revival in our time. The second reason I wanna speak about revival is that I've been reading uh, this book. It's called Lectures on Revival. It's written by a man called William Sprague and I'm really enjoying it and it's really has stirred my heart to seek and pray for God to move mightily in this country at this time. And the third reason I want to just record some videos this week on the subject of revival is three Sundays ago, I preached from Philippians chapter one. And during that sermon, I majored on verse 21, which says to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I also, in the course of that sermon, um, mentioned verse 12. Philippians 1 verse 12 and, Philippi and in Philippians 1 verse 12 Paul writes this I want you to know brothers that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ and most of the brothers have become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment are much more bold to speak the word without fear in other words, what Paul is writing there is, I've been thrown in prison. And humanly speaking, that feels like it's really going to hinder the proclamation and the advancement of the gospel. In humanly speaking, Paul the apostle being thrown in prison is kind of a disaster for the gospel. And yet, what actually happens is that the gospel advances even more quickly. Paul is able to preach the gospel to the to the prison guards, to the imperial guard, and it starts to spread like wildfire. This guy has been put in prison because he believes in Jesus Christ, and he believes that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world, and then rose from the grave victorious. And not only that, but also um, other Christian brothers who aren't in prison have become emboldened by Paul's imprisonment. And the same Paul in prison is saying, what a bold man, I'm going to follow his example, I'm going to go out and preach the gospel in his stead, in his place. And so what, humanly speaking, felt like a disaster for the gospel has actually become something hugely beneficial. The gospel is advancing, people are hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. And my feeling is that the same is true of this season as we social distance ourselves and stay in our homes during this season of coronavirus, it, it feels like a similar scenario to me. We're not having face-to-face -face contact with non-Christians and for that reason alone it might feel like a disaster for the gospel. We, we, we're struggling to see people, we're struggling to share the gospel, the good news with our friends and family. And yet, I feel God is using this season to do amazing things with the gospel. Churches are putting their sermons online and people are watching those videos just to encourage you. We, we would ordinarily have 30 or so people at our Sunday services when we met physically at the Ashcroft Art Centre. The first service that we recorded at the beginning of coronavirus and when I preached that sermon on Philippians chapter 1, that video has been watched over a hundred times and YouTube now removes duplicates so that's not the same people watching the video over and over again. That's a hundred different households tuning in to watch that video, to watch part of that service, to watch that sermon, to hear the gospel being preached 
and proclaimed. I'm really encouraged by that. And I think that's happening all over the world. Christians are becoming emboldened to share videos and to share something of their faith on social media. And non-Christians at home are are looking for things to take up their time and are watching those videos and hearing the gospel proclaimed. And for that reason, I'm just stirred. I'm just hopeful that this moment in history might be the star of something glorious, might be the star of a move of God in this country where hundreds and thousands and millions of people come to know Jesus Christ. I'm not prophesying in this video and saying that's going to happen. I'm just hopeful. I'm just praying into it. And I hope you would, in, uh, would join me in praying for the gospel to advance, in praying for revival to come, in praying for the Holy Spirit to move mightily in this country during this period. I just want to read a sentence uh, from this book written by R.C. Sprague. In his first lecture on the topic of revival, he writes this. If you have ever felt the power of God's grace, and especially if your hearts are now awake to the interests of his kingdom and the salvation of your fellow men, it cannot be a matter of indif indifference with you whether or not God's work is to be revived in the midst of us. If you have felt the power of God's grace, and if you're a Christian here this morning, you know how good God's grace is. If you've ever felt that, it cannot be a matter of indifference to you whether God moves mightily now during this age, whether he revives his work. If you know God's grace, you should long for the people around you to also know God's glorious grace. Please, let's use the extra time we have. If you have extra time, I know we have many people who are health workers and who are even busier at this period, but if you're self-isolating at home, you're not commuting to work anymore, if you have extra time, would you use that time to seek God, to pray and to hope for the revival of our nation that hundreds and thousands of millions of people might come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, might know the power of God's grace that we know and we enjoy even now. Lord God, come, revive your work in this day and age, in this country we pray for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.